Drawing and watercoloring this cute owl, and I'll show you all the ropes and how to do it. This video is put together for fossil distance learning, but anyone can paint along as long as you have some paper. I'm using watercolor paper. And a watercolor tray with a brush, some water for washing your brush and adding water to your paint, a paper towel, you will want a pencil. It's gonna help a lot. You don't have to have one, but it, it will uh, come in handy, definitely. And you wanna use a permanent marker. So with the Fossil Distance Learning, your kit includes a fine point Sharpie, which I don't actually have one here at home. I couldn't find one. I had lots of other kinds of Sharpies, but no fine point ones. So I'm using an illustrative marker that's a permanent marker. It's called Micron. You can, if you have one of those at home, if you're one who likes to draw a lot, you probably have one. And you can use that if you want. It's just something uh, that's permanent with a fine tip. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So this owl is in kind of a fun, dramatic pose. And it's definitely a pose that wouldn't make sense in nature because we aren't seeing a tail or feet or anything. But it looks kind of cool with the drawing. And that way we don't have to take hours and hours drawing feet, which feet are a great thing to learn. So if you ever have time and you want to... Uh, practice drawing, I highly recommend you practice drawing all kinds of different feet and hands of different creatures and humans because that's one of the things that a lot, a lot of times gets neglected with art. I'm speaking from personal experience. So <laughs> I'm going to top, stop talking about that now. Let's go ahead and get started. So you'll want to pick up your pencil and with your pencil marks, you want to keep them really light. I'll probably remind you a couple times. You can erase them, but keeping them light from the start is going to help you avoid a lot of extra work. So don't press very hard. On your watercolor paper, real quick, there's a smoother side and then there's a side that's a little more rough and textured. You want to paint on the rough and textured side. So let's start by drawing this head, which is kind of shaped like a heart without a point or even like an apple. So, and it's going at an angle. So I'm gonna find this corner, come over about an inch, pop down. Actually, I'm gonna come over a couple inches, pop down a couple inches. You can make a dot right about where you want this point to be. And light marks, I'm gonna make my apple shape or whatever helps you visualize it. If it's easier to visualize yourself drawing a heart. I'm gonna make my pencil marks a little darker than I normally would just so they can show up on camera. So I'll be doing some erasing. <laughs> there is this heart shape without the point or apple, peach, whatever helps you visualize that. Now I'm gonna draw the top of the head. Let me move this out of the way. The top of the head just, it starts way over here, arches over, and then we'll, we'll get to the back of the neck and then I'll show you how to bump out for the wing. So right about here, gonna round it across the top. This is a barn owl, by the way. They're so cute, and they're usually just white with some brown on them. But ours is super colorful because we can do that in the art world. Okay, right about here, I'm gonna bump out a bit. I'm gonna come down. Make sure you have room at the bottom. Just like that. Very dramatic. <laughs> and my face is a little bigger on this side. I think I started off that way, so I'm just gonna shave that down a little. You can do anything like that that you need to do real quick. There, I like that size. And now we're gonna draw this part. It just bumps out and it connects down to a point here. So right under the chin, you're gonna kind of round up a bit, like the wing is sort of bumped up. Come down, scoop inward, and then you can bring these down to a fun little point. Just like that. And then I have one last little line to draw and that's this neck here. And then we've got the body of the owl finished. So the neck is, they have actually, they have pretty thick necks. If you, if you look at the pictures of barn owls, they honestly, it just looks like their head kind of goes into their body because their neck is kind of non-existent. But I know underneath all those feathers, they've got skinny little necks because I've seen pictures of them. <laughs> And when they're uh, little owlets, when they're babies, they are really kind of scary looking. They look like aliens. But uh, we're gonna draw the cute version. 
Okay, so let's draw a line that divides from this point down to the chin, real light. Keep those pencil marks light. And now I'm going to draw a line that I put the eyes on. And I, I like to make it slightly rounded because the owl is sort of looking slightly downwards. Right, just a little above the center. Make sure that shows up. Yep, I can see it. Okay, now the eyes. They have little round beady eyes and it's part of what makes their faces so cute. So right about here, I'm gonna draw kind of an arched rainbow shape. And then over here, another one, just kind of evenly space them. Their eyes are, they're somewhat close together. Again, it's part of one of the things that makes them so cute. And then underneath each eye, you just mirror image that. So you're doing it like a rainbow shape and then a smile shape. And that's how you get that kind of rounded eye there. Actually, it, it always kind of reminds me of like a fat lemon shape. So there's little points on each side. You can round them out if you want. I've seen barn owls with really round eyes and I've seen others that have more slightly pointed eyes. So really, whatever you want. Now the beak comes down on either side. This is all part of the facial structure. So I'm just starting at the inner corner of each eye, sketching downward, and right about here, I'm gonna come across. Looks really funny, like a weird smile. But then we're gonna make that upside down isosceles triangle beak. So the isosceles triangles, the sides are, the two sides are longer and then this is short. There we go. We've got our owl sketched out, woohoo! And we will end up erasing some of our pencil lines. You can do that now if you want, like you could come through and, and rub off or rub lightly on your pencil marks. I do wanna leave this dividing line because we, we draw that back in. Or you can trace with your black marker and erase those later, which probably is easier. So when you're ready, we've got your little owl sketched out, let's pick up our fine point Sharpie or permanent marker, whatever you've got. And I like to start at the top of the head, kind of where we started to begin with. I draw a lot better with pen than I do pencil, as far as like not lifting the uh, pen or pencil. It's like with pencil, I tend to lift and sketch a lot, but with pen, I'm like, I've done a lot of illustrating though, so I think that's just something that's sort of formed as I've gone along. So it doesn't matter what order you trace your owl in, just as long as you get everything traced. And you don't even have to stick completely to your pencil lines because we will erase those and I can see where I've not been able to <laughs> go exactly along the line. We're gonna be drawing a lot with this pen, so get familiar with it. Start feeling comfortable with it. Can trace the eyes. This is the fourth time I've done this owl. <laughs> I filmed it yesterday and found out that the microphone cord had come unplugged and so it was all recorded and it had no sound. <laughs> it actually worked out pretty good though because my dog kept barking in the background and uh, that's something that... <laughs> I mean, I probably didn't have to edit it out, but I would want to edit it out, so hopefully she won't bark today. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna set this pen aside, and you might like dry your paper real quick. I think Sharpies dry really fast. Some of these others might take a little bit of time, because what can happen is if your pen marks aren't completely dry, when you go to start erasing any excess pencil, it can smear the ink. So I'm just gonna go really lightly and just erase anything that stands out too much. Any of those pencil lines that were a little too harsh. Because what can happen is your watercolor can mix with the graphite on your pencil and it'll turn your watercolor kind of grayish, which sometimes is a neat effect depending on what you're painting, but for here, where we're using really bright colors, we probably don't want that too much. 
There we go. Pretty cool, simple drawing. I'll show you guys real quick while you're doing this. Another uh, video I put up for fossil distance learning was this pumpkin and you can do that too because I included extra watercolor paper for you so you can play around you can do this project multiple times you can do whatever you want if you want to do the pumpkin video you can it's on YouTube and yeah that one was a lot of fun okay let's start doodling so these little patterns they look best when you have lots of little shapes going on. So what I did is I drew these pointed kind of leafy shapes that are actually feathers that are overlapping. They look like scales, scales that come down to a point. And uh, that gave me lots of individual compartments for patterns. And then on the face, I added some fun design details that again, also give us lots of little compartments for details. Then later on, we're gonna go back and paint everything in. The actual painting is very, very fast. So what's going to take the longest are doing these doodles. So let's just get going on it. So I'll start with some pretty simple drawings. First, we're going to draw these feathers and we'll start with this one because it's real easy. So right about here where this chin starts rounding around, you wanna make a pointy leaf shape, about like that. And then another one that comes off of that one. And you might even have room to do a third. That was easy. <laughs> we can do that, woo! And then we'll, we'll work on the face and we'll just work our way down. So you can do some fun designs on the face. I just did three circles. Like I did one up here that's kind of big. And that gives me two compartments to draw designs in. And this one maybe is a little bit smaller. And then finally this last one, and mine it was so small I just colored it in black. And to make it even more interesting, I did little flower petals around it. So this is completely optional. You can just leave it as a black circle or you can put it on there however you like. Okay, it's looking a little strange now. Looks like it has multiple eyes and that's only because we haven't colored these eyes in, which let's do that real quick before we get too much going on the face. So I left little white circles in the eyes for highlights. And what I do is I draw kind of a larger size white circle on the upper left of each eye. Right now he looks like he's looking off to the side. So just to the right of that, I make a smaller white circle. So he's got double highlights in the eye and that helps keep the gaze looking at us. Because if we leave the, the white circles over here, sometimes it can look like your owl's just looking off to the side. And if you want that, you can leave it. I'm just gonna color around these white circles carefully. And color in the whole eye outside of those white circles. And you'll probably have little white specks here and there, but you can come back with a darker color, like I used dark purple later, and just paint it over, outside of these white circles, I painted over the rest of the eye, just to cover any little white marks that were left from the pen. Places I missed with the pen, I should say. So people who've been painting with me for a while on YouTube, know that my favorite animal <laughs> is owl, an owl and all different kinds of owls. It used to be my favorite was barn owls. And then right now it switches a little bit. Right now I think my favorite is a owl called the barred owl. And we've got one in our neighborhood that just visits once in a while. In the night, uh, I walk my dogs at night with the family and we occasionally will see this owl. My son named him Cedric, so <laughs> Cedric will make an appearance once in a while. Okay, so let's go ahead now and we're gonna start drawing these lines that come out from the eyes. They're very easy and we're gonna start with this outer corner. We're just gonna go kind of bend down and we'll match that up over here. And then this side, we want to reverse that so it's going to bend up. So then you've got this funny little wedge shape. 
So it's going to look like our owl is wearing a cool mask. And then just next to this, I'm going to parallel this line so I have another wedge shape. And I just keep going back and forth so that I don't miss any. And I do, I draw enough of these that I have actually one, two, three, four of those. So I'll do another one here. And they can be different sizes, like this can be wider, some of these can be skinnier. And then I'm going to do another one right here. So then we'll, we'll do that on this side so that we have one, two, three, four wedges. And this is only if you want to do exactly what I'm doing, because you can do your own thing. So, yeah, mine's a little uneven. I have a little more white space here than here, but I'm not going to trouble myself too much with this because there's a lot going on with this, so I highly doubt that that's going to be even very noticeable. In the end, I'm probably the only one who will <laughs> obsess about it. <laughs> okay, great. We've got the face compartments drawn. We'll come back and start doodling them in later, but let's go ahead and do these feathers. So I have this big blank area, which we'll put little dots in later. So right under the chin here, I want to come down and I'm going to keep doing that. I'm just repeating something similar to what I did up here. So there's that. And then the others, I kept referring to them as like looking like fish scales because they really do and that can help you visualize how to make them because we want it to look like this is on top, then the next one is under that, and the next one under that, and the next one under that. So I find that the best way to do it is to actually start, we've got this triangle shape here. I'll do one in the middle, just along like the end of a leaf that's coming out there. And then I'll do one here. So they're kind of in between these triangles. And then one here. And then I've got room to put one in here. So that was pretty easy. Hopefully it was easy for you guys too. But I always look for these triangle shapes and I'll do another shape that's kind of in between these. Obviously not centered completely in between because they're just shifted all over. I've got room for a little part of one right here. You can see I ended up with a lot of that going on. Then I'll pop one in here. It's looking feathery. And I'm going to start with this one, doing my leafy shape right under that. And then the next one, and again, I've got that little line going off the bottom here. And I put one here. We're almost done with these. I recommend making these kind of, unless you want to spend extra time after the video adding more and more doodles, I'd make them on the larger side because you can end up having way too many compartments to fill in. And you can leave some of them blank or you can paint them in and then go back and start doodling them in later. All right, now it's time for the fun part. I'm gonna start with something easy. On the beak, I'm just gonna make little horizontal stripes. There we go. And now let's see. Up here, I'll just do little specks by just dotting your pen down. This one, you can do specks as well, or you can do larger dots. It's kind of a small circle, so. And then stripes are always good. I'll do some vertical stripes here. Stripes are easy, and they are pretty impactful, especially if you make them really close together. horizontal stripes here. Just changing it up. My patterns on this one will be similar to this, but they're not going to all be exactly the same. Although I really like this facial pattern, so I am going to stick with something similar to that. So these outside wedges, I just fill with ovals, and each oval is obviously going to get taller and taller as you get to the outside edge here. And you might just have room to put one last little part of one. Same thing over here. coolest owl ever. <laughs> Don't know how I'd feel if I saw one flying at me in nature that looked like this. I'd be like, wow, that's cool. Is it going to hurt me? <laughs> now I'm just doing stripes here and I'll match that up on the other side of the face too. 
you don't have to match yours up at all. You can, like, I'm going to say it lots of times, you can do what you want here. I just know what I like and how I really liked the way that turned out. So why not do it again? We'll just revisit that. <laughs> just doing little bubbles now. Each one getting a little bigger. Pretty neat already. And gosh, maybe I will do something different here. I'm gonna do vertical stripes. So on this one, I just did more bubbles. Oh, these look like great big eyelashes. <laughs> so my stripes are just kind of matching the curve of this outside line. Yeah, I like that. So the face, the patterns on the face are done. Yay, we're just making our way here. This part will take a little longer. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a, a circle, like an oval in the middle of the forehead here on the widow's peak part. I'll fill that in. And then I just swirl my little pen around making dots that you can see they're gonna go all the way down here, up here. So it's kind of like a dot, dotted outline. This type of doodling is really fun and there are different words for it. I know there's a, I don't know if there's a company called um, Zen Doodle, but there's a company called Zen Tangle. And you can actually become an instructor. They have a school for it, or at least they used to. And I had a Zen Tangle, official Zen Tangle instructor come to one of my live studios once and she taught us all how to make the coolest patterns and designs. So you can Google that. Just Google Zentangle, it's all one word. And you can Google Zentangle patterns and you'll see all kinds of stuff. It's very similar. They have names for their patterns though. It's really dialed in and neat. Okay, let's go ahead now and do, what I'm gonna do with these is, I just did something very simple. I did a dot in the bottom of each and then a, I did like a it's like a diamond shape just to keep it easy so if I were to connect the dots in each of these I would have a diamond shape and then I just filled in around those with little specks just by tapping the pen to the paper and up in here, you can just kind of let them dissipate off. I thought of this as like a starry galaxy. Either that or someone came and sprinkled pepper all over this poor guy. <laughs> if you look at Barnell's, they do have these little black specks that it almost does look like somebody sprinkled salt and pepper on it because they're like white and black. I guess I've got room to do a little dot there. So I guess we're sort of suggesting that here. And you can leave space, like I left blank space at the top here, or you can bring those little dots all the way up. Whatever you wanna do. So every time I've done this all, like I said, this is my fourth time, I've done this checkerboard pattern here because I just think it, it it's a fun little spot to do it. I wanted it to be black and white, so I left it that way, but you can make yours color later if you want. All I'm gonna do is parallel this line with some evenly spaced stripes. And now I'm gonna parallel this line, heading back there and you can see I'm just, as I get down here, it's gonna parallel this line. It's almost like a spider web. And then checkerboards, every other square is colored in. So I start at the top left corner, fill that in, skip one, fill the other in, skip one, fill the other in. And then on underneath that, the next line, you need to go so that you have black on top of white. So I'm gonna do one in the middle. So then you end up with this shape. And then skip one and just keep doing that. It's totally okay if you accidentally color in <laughs> two next to each other. I've done that so many times in my life just because you can get going on it and then realize, oops, well, happy little accident. There, it's like the Vans pattern. <laughs> 
All right. Looking pretty cool. Oh, look, my hand smeared all of these. That happens once in a while. I tend to um, rest my hand on my paper when I'm drawing. Usually the pen will dry really fast, so it's not a problem. So what happened is I had my hand there, and as I'm working here, I smeared across here. But these actually kind of look now like shooting stars, so I will refer to that as a happy little accident because there's nothing I can do about it. And I'm just gonna go with it. I don't think it looks bad because pretty, sometimes accidents are good. Okay, I'll fill this one like I did with the other. I'll fill it in with hearts because they are very simple to draw. And you can occasionally do like a half heart, like this pattern continues outside of what we're seeing. And maybe just to be different, I'll do this pattern next. I really like this pattern. It's so easy and it looks really neat. So what I do for that is I make these long wavy like ramen noodle lines. Like that. And then I just evenly space little black dots down each of these. kind of whimsical and fun and easy. And let's see. This pattern I love. It's really cool. And once you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy to do. You're basically drawing rainbow shapes. So I'll start down here at the point and I make a tall skinny arch. And then I'm going to make another and then another. So I have three arches. So one, two, three. And then I'll start over here. I'll make that tall arch and another and another. So what happens is these start overlapping. And here. And you just fill this whole area with these. And some will go off the side of the, you know, it's going to, it's going to like have some that go off the side of the feather. Just do the best you can. These can be different size rainbow shapes too. It's kind of like a funky scallop shape. I count in my head always. I'm like one, two, three. One, two, three. One, this one's gonna Go off here, two, three. Got just a little bit of room left here. And then I got room to at least suggest some over here. And one of the things I've seen people do with this is they'll color in this first original arch and then leave the others white. So that's something that's really neat, but you probably wanna do that later. The spirals, they almost hurt your eyes. It's like you're being hypnotized by that. So I start in the middle, I do a really tight spiral and I keep going around, take your time. And then what's gonna happen is you're gonna run into the one above it and you just stop and then skip that point. So stop, then skip down here. Stop, and <laughs> skip down here. And now I've run into the edge here, so then I just, do stripes that match the curve up here and I'll do them down here that are going this way and it'll just look like you filled in this whole section with a spiral. Now under here, got room to suggest one right there. Don't get hypnotized. Don't stare at it too long. <laughs> uh, the ghosts. Okay, so the ghosts are so much fun and they're so cute and spooky. And uh, I mean, they're not really spooky. They're just more cute. But you can uh, draw them if you want. If you want this to have kind of a Halloween vibe or you can leave them off and do another pattern. I will show you how to do them. So I start with just a long skinny arch. And then next to it, I'll make another one that's maybe curved over. Maybe this one's a little taller. Maybe a little guy here. 
Occasionally I'll do one that's curved or wavy. And they're all just tightly stacked together, stuck inside this feather. And now you can leave it like that. That's kind of a neat design. Or you can go back and give them little eyes. And anytime I do the ghosts, I almost always paint them with this Ghostbuster Slimer Green. Because it's light enough that they show up and it's just fun. Ectoplasm. Got room for a little guy here. Oh, I forgot eyes on this one. I think I maybe got them all. Spiders are another thing you can do. Here's on the pumpkin I did little spiders. So that's an option. Uh, little half moons. You know, I will take one. I'll do half moons. I'll do half moons right here. So I just do a little crescent shape and I make them facing different directions and they can be facing up and down. They can have some that go part way off the side. You can fill in between with little specks, like up in here, so you have moon and stars, why not? This pattern is another one like this where it's really easy and impactful and fun. So I'll do one right here. Just do this long wavy, what I call like ramen noodle wavy lines. And then starting with this one over here on the left, I'm gonna put the letter V, like a V shape that's evenly spaced. And the next vine over, I switch, reverse those Vs so they're upside down. And then for the next vine, they're gonna be right side up again. So it's like you're just doing opposite. Sometimes you have to think about it. <laughs> what did I do last? Okay. Leaves, those are super easy. Um, here's a good one for them. So I just do these almond shapes that are facing different directions and they can be different sizes. Like here, I'll do a tiny one. I'll do a little one up here too. And I try to consciously make them face different directions so that it's like fall and they're falling off the trees. And then you'll just go back and you'll draw a dividing line down the center of each. You can think up your own patterns too. If there's something in particular that you love, to draw, draw it in there. Like here, I drew little cat faces. I'll show you how to do those and I'll show you how to draw a little owl face real quick. So the cat just has the triangle ears, flat top of the head. This rounds down. I just do a little sideways V on each side of the face and eyes. And there's your little cat and you can scatter them around in different directions. If you wanna do little owl faces, it's very similar. I do the pointed ears, this is like a great horned owl. Now this is gonna scoop down. And this is gonna be a much longer U shape. And I'll draw large round eyes. And then just a little beak in the middle. And you can actually do an upside down triangle. I've got one of these that has those. Yeah, this one. This one was kind of elaborate. I've got little candy corns. There's my little owls. I drew a big crescent moon on that one, but it got a little too involved and the video was gonna end up being really long, so I simplified it a bit. This is a good one to throw in there too, because we've got a lot of loose open patterns. And so I'll draw a line down the middle of one of these and then I parallel these lines with really tight together stripes. So this ends up looking kind of like a leaf. And then I will do the opposite direction over here. Let's 
What next? Bubbles. The bubble doodles are pretty fun to do because you can do lots of different sizes. So I'll start with some really tiny ones. Then maybe I'll do a bigger one and then I'll surround it by little tiny ones. And maybe a bigger one up here. Surround it by medium sized ones. Then maybe some tiny ones, maybe a large one. And I just keep drawing those until I run out of room. This pattern here is just exactly what we did when we drew these feathers on. I just go through like so. Just a mini version of what we did with the whole owl body. Overlapping scales. Oh, I think I was going to show you how to do spiders, too, if you want to do that. For spiders, you just draw an oval body and fill it in. And most of you guys know how many legs a spider has. Eight, so four on each side. And that's just, like, rounded legs. You can do, like, those spooky, creepy spiders that have those real sharp legs. They're almost like a shape. On this side, they're shaped like a seven. You can see that one looks friendlier. That one looks a little creepy. <laughs> I think I'll do another spiral, maybe right down here. Oh, and since we are getting close to Halloween, I think we've got, I don't know, like 12 days or something from the date I'm filming this. I'll show you, I know I mentioned candy corns. Candy corns, obviously we know they're triangle shaped, but they're not sharp like that. Now if you wanna do witch hats, there you go, you've got little witch hats. Candy corns though, they're the same shape but they're rounded edges. Or broken off, a lot of times they're broken off. And then I do a kind of rounded line across the bottom and then one way up at the top. So you can do a scattered scattered uh, pattern of those like that right there. That's what that is. Daisies, very easy. I just do little loops out from a middle point, little scoops. Stars are another thing you can draw. I've got just a few shapes left. Over here, I'm just gonna do a line of black dots. And maybe here I'll just do tight stripes. I know a pattern I haven't done yet. I haven't done a diamond pattern. I feel like that's a good spot for it. So to do a diamond pattern, I'm gonna make big bold diagonal lines that are as evenly spaced as you can get them. And then over here, they're going the opposite direction, also evenly spaced. And then if you want, you can fill in every other like we did here and have another checkerboard pattern that's just done in the diamond format. Over here, this is such a tiny area. I'm just gonna do little dots. Two spaces left. Oh, and so many different things I could do. Although there's not a lot of room. One of the things I like to do is curly cues. So I'll do like a curly cue like that. And then the next one's gonna stem off of it. And then one will stem off of that one. And they can be different size curls. Like you can do big, big ones and you can do tiny ones. And I just always have them like stem off of another one so that eventually I have kind of filled up the space. Boink. All right, last one. I feel like I have a lot of stripes going on. So I might do something different. You can repeat any of these patterns too. Maybe I will do just large polka dots and I'm gonna fill those in with black. I would, if you're gonna do this, pick a smaller area because it does take a while to fill all of these in.
there. And now we're about ready to paint. That looks cool, I, I love them both. This is a fun owl, for sure. So we're done with our pencil, we're done with our pen, unless you wanna go back and add anything later. Keep in mind, if you haven't done all your patterns yet, after you paint and the paint dries, you can go back and draw right over the top of the paint. So you you can, if you've got empty feathers, just leave them blank, paint them uh, with whatever color you want. And by leave them blank, I mean don't draw any designs in them yet. Uh, paint it whatever color you want it to be, let it dry and then go back and pattern away. So let's start with, I'm gonna start with this lower part of the face. You'll wanna grab your brush. Here's your paints. You've got a lot of different colors. This is dark brown, so if you want brown, here's I did brown on some of these. You can use that. This area is your mixing palette, so you can mix colors like uh, this Slimer Green. I mixed green and yellows. So I just like swirled my brush in water, then put it in the paint and mixed it here. One thing I try to be conscious of and make sure I don't do is a lot of times you can get to where all your paint colors are mixed together. So if I'm mixing a color, like I'll just make that Slimer Green. I'll dip my brush in the water, take that water, swirl it in the green quite a bit till I pick up a lot of my brush, come over here, dab that down, and I might repeat that process so then I end up with more paint over here. Now instead of going right to the yellow, I'm gonna wash my brush really good. And now I'll go for the yellow, swirl it around, Just you're just kind of invigorating that paint and getting it off of the paint tray and onto your brush and then I'll mix it here. And if I need to add more, I wanna wash my brush again. And that's how you'll keep from polluting your paint trays. Now you can rinse these off if you need to. It's just, this'll keep you from always having to do that. So I've got my Slimer green. I was gonna start with the lower part of the face, so let's do that. It'll just be green this time. And you can do whatever color you want here. Now I know I just mixed green. Maybe you mix green along with me. You don't have to use it here. You can start, you can paint any of these with the green. But what I want to do, every time I mix a color, I will use it until it's gone. And so I'm gonna paint in this lower part of the face and I'll still have some paint left probably. And so I'll go through and I'll, I'll pick and choose little areas to paint with that color. And then I switch to another color and do the same thing. I'll paint, like, well, maybe I'll use purple somewhere. And I just paint a bunch of them purple and then switch to a different color. So that way you're not just, like, constantly switching. Unless you want to do it that way. There's no harm in it. It just takes a little longer. So I've got the green, and I will use it down here somewhere. Here's a good spot. Oh, and I want to do my ghosts in green. just carefully go along. If you have too much water mixed in your paint, it's kind of just leaving big blobs of water on your paper. One thing you can do is you can wash your brush, dry it real good on your towel, and then just come back and you use your brush like a sponge. It's gonna suck up any excess water. And you might have to dry it a couple times and repeat that process, but it'll get any excess blobs of water off. Here's my Slimer Ghosts. And this is good, I'm just about running out of that color. I'm gonna show you something kinda cool. Get to do a little blendy effect here. So I'm gonna wash my brush. Now you can see it on here, and it got a little out of control here, I will admit that. Barn owls have this shading that goes under their eye and down the inner corner, and it's kind of a reddish brown, and it looks really cool on them. I don't want to do reddish brown because I think that would mix with the green and, and not be super pretty. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix a little bit more dark green into my color, so just darken it a tiny bit. I almost maybe darkened it a bit too much. You don't want a lot of water on your brush, so dab it on your towel once or twice. Come under the eye, now this is still wet, so it's gonna blend in kinda cool. Come under the eye, and then down the inner corner, all the way down to the beak. And you can even come across here if you want, you can make it real artsy. And then I'll do that on the other side too. So under the eye, 
I'm giving him eye bags. <laughs> and then down that inner corner. Like so. And you can even wash and dry your brush really good. So you have your brush that's just very, just very slightly damp. And you can, while this is still wet, you can kind of blend it out. Like, take your brush and uh, keep putting my hand in the wet paint down here. <laughs> I'm going to keep doing that. And yeah, I'm just taking my slightly damp brush and just blending that darker green out. That looks really cool. I actually like it a little bit better than this one that got it a little out of control. Purple is what I'm going to use next. You can use any color you want. Now, water works like white paint. Like if you've ever worked with like acrylic paint or oil paint or anything like that, if you wanted to make a lighter purple, you would mix white with it. But with watercolor, the water is our white. So you can see how very dark purple that is. And if I wanted to make it pale, I just keep adding water. So you can see the difference over here compared to that. So there, I've got two different shades of purple now. I've got a lot of water on my brush, so I'm gonna dab it off. Maybe redip the tip of this brush in this lighter color. And come on in, and look how light that is. It's almost pink. And then I'll do another one of these in a darker purple so you can see the difference. So yeah, the water was our white paint that <laughs> lightened this up. I'll wipe that brush off. And now I'm gonna go just straight for the dark purple over here that doesn't have much of any water mixed with it. And how about I'll just fill that in. See how, see the difference? Gonna be careful anytime I'm going edge to edge with a color that's still wet. You can end up with a bleed if you're not super careful. So you don't want a ton of water on your brush when you're doing going right next to one that's already wet. And it happens, this is what bleed, that's exactly what happened here. I had too much water and uh, I had several others here where one color bled into another, like this kind of right along that edge. Not too bad, but just keep that in mind. It does happen, it's not a big deal, but I try to avoid it if it's something I don't want to happen. So again, just be careful along these edges if you're going right up next to a color that's still wet. They like to join forces on you. <laughs> there. Okay, I'm gonna add a little more water in here. I'm gonna add this pink in another spot. You can see how I skip around a bit, you know, like I'm working on the top, working down here, and that is just so that these areas can dry by the time I come back in with another color next to them so they're not so wet. I love purple and green together. So I'm gonna put some purple up here. This is probably still a little wet, so be careful. Now maybe I'll do the darker purple next to it. Oh, and I'm going right next to a wet color, which I try to avoid doing, but sometimes I just go before my brain is ready. And sometimes that works out really well. <laughs> Happy little accidents. There's that artist, Bob Ross, and that's his phrase. He says, we don't make mistakes. We just make happy little accidents. And it's true. I've made a lot of things that I thought were mistakes on paintings. And then it just later on becomes kind of an important part of the painting. Liking that, that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna find another spot for dark purple. I'll have it over here. Check and see how we're doing time-wise. Oh, good, okay, we're doing okay. I think I've got about 10 minutes, so I'm gonna high-speed this. <laughs> Not take so much time picking colors. I'm gonna add a lot more yellow to the screen, so it's a slightly different shade here. And I'm gonna paint this area. And 
And this, because it's so easy and you know how to do this part now, you can, after this video is over, you can just keep working on it on your own time. So, you know, if you want to work on it after school, finish it up or the next day or whenever you have some free time to do art. It's a nice thing about this sort of project is you really can just set it aside and come right back to it when you're ready and have more time. I'm gonna use some blue now. I have a lot of water in here so I'm gonna dab my brush a bit. I have a blue here. Put blue on the tail part here, or the tip of the wing, I guess that would be. When I was young, long ago in the 80s, <laughs> there, and they maybe still make these books, there were uh, watercolor books you could buy that, I'm gonna lighten some blue with some water real quick. They were printed pages and they had little tiny, like the drawing and little tiny dots of color. So it was black and white printed, like black and white outline, like how we started. And then little dots of color throughout the outlines. And when you'd come in with your wet paintbrush, the color would turn into, you'd, you know, start smearing out. So you'd have, it's like built-in watercolor. I don't know if they still make those, but man, I used to love those when I was a kid. It just made me think of it when I was painting this in. <laughs> I'm gonna switch to yellow now. I like to do the moon area yellow. Dab my brush, got a lot of water on it. That's, now I need a little more water. <laughs> Where else do I want to put yellow? How about down here with these little daisies? I haven't used red yet, so I'm going to use some red. Swirl that little brushy around. Wake up, red! You're there, wake up. Let's see, maybe my leaves can be red. They're Japanese maple leaves. <laughs> They're totally a wrong shape for that. But in a painting, you can have your, you can invent your own leaves. I mean, we invented our own owl, didn't we? And this project, like, it's great for adults to do too. So if you're an adult and you're watching this, please paint along. It is so good and fun and it's so good for your stress levels. Unless you're the type that really stresses about your artwork, which I hope you don't because it's just artwork. We're not solving any crimes here or anything like that. <laughs> We're just painting. I'm gonna make a blue purple by mixing blue and purple. And that makes a really cool color. I feel like I wanna throw a little more blue in there. I could even throw more blue. So it makes a real violet color. And I'm gonna use that to paint this it's like the helmet. It reminds me of a helmet or something because the, I've got these dots along the edges that remind me of like metal rivets. So this is an armored owl. Let's see, there's that one movie like The Guardians or something and I think, I don't know if I, it's been so many years since I've watched that. Like my kids who are full grown now were super young and I can't remember do, if the owls wear armor or not. But I mean, it sounds like they would and they're called The Guardians. <laughs> I guess that doesn't matter. 
But my owl looks like it has armor on. This is a very pleasing color to me. There are some colors I just love, and this is one of them. I think it is so pretty. I'm gonna turn this upside down, and I'll do that if I'm trying to reach a spot, and I don't wanna end up smearing all my work that's still wet here. So you can do that too, unless you have your paper taped down. <laughs> then you'll have a little extra work to do to, to flip it around. So in the last video with the pumpkin, I was telling the participants to that video about how you can actually use coffee grounds and stain watercolor paper. And I've got a couple examples I'll show you in a second here because it makes the coolest effect. And if you like the smell of coffee, <laughs> when you start painting watercolor on top of the coffee that's dried, you just smell coffee and it's wonderful. Unless you don't like the smell of coffee, then it's not so wonderful. But uh, it can really make a pretty neat, it can take your watercolor project to a different level. So here, I'll grab those real quick. These are a couple of paintings I did for my daughter of some video game characters she likes. And uh, yeah, so you can see the this is coffee stained and this also is coffee stained. This one I left a border around it. And then I just painted um, brown watercolor and I used some black ink from one of these pens like this to draw some of this in here. And what you do is you take the wet coffee grounds from like your coffee maker or your French press, whatever you do, or your parents and spread it over a piece of watercolor paper. Just trying to decide what color I wanna do. Decisions, decisions. So you spread it over the watercolor paper, let it dry overnight. Oops, I polluted my red. Let it dry overnight and then uh, the next morning you can brush off the, the grounds. And you're left with this, what I just showed you. It's, it makes the paper kind of mottled. Like if you were doing a pirate's map or something, it would be a super cool way to do it. All right, I think I'm getting close to being done. Hopefully you guys are too, because we're nearing the end of the hour. I think the hardest part for me is choosing what colors. I haven't used orange yet, so I think I'm gonna do that next. Too much water here, so I'm gonna suck that up with my brush that I wiped off on the towel. I chose this particular uh, prong brand of watercolor because. Uh, I like that the colors are kind of muted. Like I know other watercolors, this orange would be really super vivid and bright, which is fun too. But I like to use muted colors a lot of times because you can see those bright ones all the time because everybody has the Crayola paint trays. And totally fine, you can use those. But the number one reason I chose these this brand was because it came with a really good brush. And so many of the other ones, the brushes are like this weird plasticky nonsense that's harder to work with. And this is just a nylon, probably synthetic. Yeah, it's a synthetic a nylon brush. Nice and flexible. There's a, one of my hairs is deciding to nest on that painting. <laughs> Oh, the beak, let's do, how about just yellow? I mean, that's very basic. You can do whatever color you want. I thought, oh, yellow beak is normal bird color, but none of the rest of this is normal bird color. <laughs> and I've got this last little section to paint. I guess I could do it now. I was thinking I might let it dry and be done with the video, but 
I've got wet sections all around it. I'm just gonna go for it, I guess. How about green? We'll see, we'll see if I get some crazy uh, watercolor, green watercolor bleeding into orange watercolor. Let's paint right over that daisy. She can be green. <laughs> Another cool thing you can do with watercolor, this is just like for, for those of you guys who want to use your paper, your excess paper and do other projects. While your watercolor is still wet, you can like, I could take and sprinkle salt on this area, just regular table salt. And it has to dry, you can't do anything with it immediately. But once it dries, you can brush the salt off and it leaves really cool patterns in your watercolor. Try it sometime, it's worth it, it's fun to see. All right, doo, 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 doo. one last little section right here. I guess two last little sections. You can see I like purple. I really actually like the purple that came on this palette. Ta-da! My beautiful owl! I actually like this one a little bit better than this one, and I think part of it is uh, I have a lot of brighter colors here, but also this, I mean like lighter, like this light green, but also <laughs> this little bleed out that happened on the face. It kind of makes the, the eyes sort of disappear, and this one eyes really pop out. So your last thing you'll want to do is take your pencil, Sign your painting with your initials or whatever. I like to put the date, the year, 2022. And you are good to go. Let it dry. You can, um, after it's dry, you could put it, make sure it's dry because you don't want wet watercolor paint transferring to anything else, but you can put a heavy book on top of it or um, put it inside a heavy book. And that might help flatten it out a bit if it's warped a bit. But yeah, they're pretty fun. There's different ways you can frame them if you decide you want to do that. But I hope you guys had a great time. I enjoyed this one and the other one. And I guess we'll see you for the next video. Maybe some holiday videos. I'll put up some more kid paintings too. And uh, actually I call them kid paintings, but adults can totally do them because they're super fun for everyone. So I'm going to sign out now and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.